One day I wrote her name upon the strand, but came the waves and washed it away. Again I wrote it with a second hand, but came the tide and made my pains his prey. Vain man, said she, that dust in vain essay, a mortal thing to so immortalize, for I myself shall like to this decay, and eke my name be wiped out likewise. Not so, quote I, let baser things devise, to die in dust, but you shall live by fame. My verse your virtues rare shall eternize, and in the heavens write your glorious name. Where, when as death shall all the world subdue, our love shall live, and later life renew. Hello and welcome back to Bookish Today. I'm here with another installment of Poetry for Beginners and this month's poem is the Elizabethan poet Edmund Spencer. Uh, Edmund Spencer lived, uh, was a contemporary I suppose, of William Shakespeare and he lived um, during the Elizabethan period and Elizabeth's reign had a tremendous impact on his life and on his work and on his position. Uh, Edmund Spencer was born into a relatively nondescript family of uh, cloth manufacturers. As a matter of fact, there's there's some question as to which John Spencer was actually his father. They had enough money to send him to school and from there he went on uh, to attend Cambridge where he got a Bachelor of Arts and a Master's degree from Cambridge. Um, he then became attached to the household of Sir Robert Dudley, the Earl of Leicester, who, if you know anything about um, Queen Elizabeth's reign, at one time um, he was one of her uh, favorites, uh, so he, that got him a, a good position. He went on to be the private secretary for, um, oh, I can't remember, Arthur Gray, uh, who was made, uh, put in some kind of a leadership position uh, in Ireland during the Elizabethan period where he formed some relatively unpleasant ideas about the Irish. I will say that in a lot of his work, uh, politics figures in a lot of the work of Edmund Spencer. Um, his first kind of, I think, notable works were called, um, let's see, The Shepherd's Calendar, uh, which was kind of written in an unusual, almost archaic style in an, in an attempt to kind of, I think, hide some of the political commentary he was making about politics at the time. Um, his most famous work is called The Fairy Queen, which many people assume is about Queen Elizabeth, and it may be about elements of her reign and certain elements of her, but strictly speaking, I don't think it's about her, but it is an attempt to create an English epic poem along the lines of the Aeneid uh, by Virgil. Um, Spencer admired the epic poets of the ancient world and he thought Virgil was the best and he wanted to be thought of as being on the same par as Virgil. Interestingly, one of his contemporaries, uh, Philip Sidney, uh, thought that Spencer was the only real poet, uh, only real serious poet working in Elizabethan England, which, you know, knowing that he and Shakespeare kind of lived at least in part at the same time makes that seem a little, um, a little unusual. Uh, but I don't know what the relationship between uh, Philip Sidney and, and Shakespeare was. Um, but the Fairy Queen then was was essentially the work that he, he was best known for. He had kind of a, an unfortunate uh, series of marriages. Uh, I think his wives had a tendency to die. And late in his life, he married a, one, a younger woman. I think her name was Elizabeth Boyle, I believe, who was much younger than he was. And she then is the subject for uh, his book of sonnets, which is called The Amoretti. Uh, and essentially there are a lot of sonnets in which he just dedicated these kind of love poems to his new wife. Um, I ran into, uh, into uh, Edmund Spencer doing historical research. Um, um, I can't even remember which class I was taking. Oh, it was a class about... Uh, the Renaissance and Reformation, and we had to write a long paper. That's really all the class was. We went to class and listened to our professor talk about issues, but then we all had our independent research projects to do. And being more of a political bent than of a uh, poetry bent back then, I basically did a study of Spencer's really political polemic propaganda track called uh, A View of the Present State of Ireland, which is incredibly anti-Irish Propaganda, propaganda suggesting and supporting all kinds of horrible ideas about the Irish 
and suppressing the Irish violently, and he describes the Irish in what today I think we would clearly call racist terms. He was a man of his time, which, you know, was not always pretty. He died relatively young at the age of 46. At one time, he actually owned a castle, and I think it was Kilcommon Castle in Ireland, and like 3,000 acres of land. This actually qualified him to be a gentleman, but, you know, uh, Irish independence uh, people attacked his castle and essentially burned it down, and he and his family fled to London. And then when he got back, he died in London in 1599. So, this poem is uh, probably Spencer's most famous sonnet, and uh, it probably doesn't need a whole lot of explanation because, to be honest with you, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, but I think it's, it's really beautiful in what it says, uh, and that's why I chose it. So, I'll put the sonnet up over here uh, so that you can see it again. But essentially, it's a, the, the author is talking about how he wrote his... Um, his lover's name in the sand. Um, I don't. I think you know. At some point in all, almost all of our youths, somebody we were infatuated with or in love with, we wrote their name. And isn't it kind of curious? I think how a basically human thing that is to to feel a connection. At least this is true for me. And so maybe it's not basically human. Maybe it's just me. But to feel a connection just in writing the name of the person you love, as though somehow. That makes that connection stronger. Anyway, he writes his, her name in the sand, or on the strand, as he says, along the beach, which we know, inevitably, as we find out in the poem, the sand, the, the waves come in and wash it away. He persists, and he does it again. Uh, and the same thing happens. And it's at this point that where we hear uh, the voice of, his, of the woman that he loves, and I kind of like her tone. She essentially says, well, you know, of course that's what happened. You wrote my name on the beach and the waves are going to come washed away just as one day I'll die and I'll turn into dust and there'll be no more of me. The same thing is true. You know, we're not immortal. Um, and therefore, you know, my life will end just as, you know, you writing my name on the sand came to an end, end with the waves. And then he, he protests that by saying, oh no, that's not true that I'm going to immortalize you uh, in these lines, in these verses, in these poems, and I'm going to tell everybody how great you were, uh, and that you're, you know, and then in kind of the conclusion that, you know, um, he will, uh, let me see what's the line exactly. Uh, and then he says, And in heaven write your glorious name, where, when as death shall all the world subdue, our love shall live, and later life renew. So he basically says, you know, I'm going to write your name in the heavens, and it will be there for eternity. And when we both pass on and we're dead, it will, you know, our love will be renewed because of the permanence, the immortality of our love and your name and my memory of you. I just think it's a, a lovely poem. And one of the things I like best about it is uh, the woman's voice uh, in the poem, essentially scolding him for being foolish. Uh, and then his love being so great that he, he overcomes those protests and declares the eternity of their love and that their love will last even after death. Anyway, I just think it's a beautiful sonnet. So what we were supposed to do this month, I think, is we were supposed to, since it's ShakeTube month, we were supposed to uh, pick Shakespeare sonnets. But I wanted to do something a little bit different, kind of inspired by Jay Shea and his kind of pre-ShakeTube everything but Shakespeare reading, I thought, hey, that's a great a great opportunity to talk about a poet from the time period, you know, who's not actually Shakespeare. Anyway, uh, hope you liked it. Uh, look forward to your comments in the comment section below. As always, thank you for watching.